So remember that we will have a discussion period following this next paper. And I would like to invite our next presenter, Jennifer Riley, to the podium. Thank you to Dr. Sadowak, Dr. Connor, and the program committee for allowing me to present this paper on speaking fundamental frequency variation of humans when speaking to dogs. There is a saying, Ma, dog is man's best friend. Little is known, however, about vocal variation patterns when humans communicate with their beloved dogs. Prior research of stutterers found smoother speaking patterns when speaking with animals. People with language deficits have also been found to talk more freely with, their, with animals. But how do people talk to their animals? That is our question. We examined the fundamental frequency shift in two and 20 human volunteers comparing baseline SFO patterns to a large dog and to a small dog. Our belief was that humans would use a higher mean fundamental frequency when speaking to a smaller dog. Our, issue, or our initial design was for 10 dog owners and 10 non-owners. Our final data set had 11 dog owners and 9 non-owners. Happily, our data set had 10 females and 10 males. Subjects completed a questionnaire and signed a consent form prior to participation. Questions included history of dog ownership, or living with a dog, preference for size of dog, favorite dog breed, and any fear or health issues with their dogs. Baseline SFO measures were taken prior to communication with the dogs. Baseline measures were counting 1 to 10, reading the rainbow passage, and telling a story about school or college. The rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors. She has such a pointy little nose. You're so pretty. Holly, what's going on, girl? You like coming down here? Yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. Now we're chilling out. Norman, hi. Hey, I got something for you. How you doing? Hey, hi, Norman. Oh, wow. You're excited. You're friendly. Let me have the other one. Can I have your other paw? Thank you. Thank you. Do you eat across the street at Bobo? Get the pasta tasting menu? Hey, let me hear you talk. How come you're really talking? Dog owners were placed in group A. Non-owners were placed in group B. Our groups turned out to have a similar age range. All volunteers agreed to speak with two dogs. One subject stated being afraid of dogs sometimes, but still wished to participate in the study. Some volunteers were trained voice users, while others were not. All volunteers were native English speakers or native bilingual speakers. One native English speaker grew up in the UK before moving to Australia and then to the US. Native bilingual speakers spoke in English to the dogs. Large and small dogs were recruited. With, a weight, with weight limits of less than 20 pounds for a small dog and more than 60 pounds for a large dog. Our small dogs averaged 11 pounds and ranged from 3 to 7 years old. Our large dogs averaged 81 pounds and ranged from 1 to 7 years old. Dogs were consented by their owners, included stating that their dog was not aggressive around strangers, and a dog history questionnaire was also completed by the owner. To help data collection of a 20 second of a 30 second conversation with the dog, humans offered a softies grilled chicken flavor treat to the dog. <laughs> no further guidance was provided to human or dog. At the end of the dog's participation, they were given a reward, a doggy chew toy. 
Recordings were obtained with a Tascam portable digital voice recorder held approximately four inches from the human's mouth. Signals were analyzed with multi-speech. Dog noises, laughter, and non-speech noises were removed from data analysis. Similar to indifference between SFO speaking to the dog and SFO baseline was determined. Normal FO variation in the speech is considered to be approximately plus or minus four semitones. All but two subjects increased their main SFO when speaking to a dog. One outlier was the subject who had reported some fear of dogs. The other outlier was the native UK speaker. Eighteen subjects increased their SFO more than four semitones for at least one size dog. Thirteen subjects increased their SFO more than four semitones for both large and small dog communication. This slide shows the XY plot for subjects in group A and subjects in group B, looking at semitone increase from baseline, comparing large dog to small dog. As a group, both females and males determined more than four semitone increase from their baseline when speaking to a small dog and when speaking to a large dog. Although males appeared to have a larger semitone increase when speaking to small dogs, it was not, it was not significant when compared to females. The greatest semitone in change was a male subject from group B, Uncle Stewart, who increased his mean SFO 18 semitones for the small dog and 14 semitones for the large dog. <laughs> when speaking to a small dog, females significantly increase their SFO compared to males. 57% of, of U.S. households have a pet. Dogs are more attentive to higher pitched information, which may su suggest preference for females or males using a higher pitch than typical baseline. Because voice disorders can be caused by hyperfunction or a strain of the vocal folds, use of increased mean SFO in dog communication is important to recognize in the therapy setting. Our data also suggests the need to explore cultural differences that may impact on dog communication. Personal speaking style may also be a factor. We know mean SFO increases with dog communication. We need to explore the extent of semitone variation when speaking with a small dog versus a large dog. We should also examine changes in body function, such as blood pressure and heart rate when speaking to a dog and a cat. <laughs> Dysphonic patients who care for dogs need voice therapy exercises to better communicate with their beloved pets. Why? Because patients keep their pets. They don't give them away when they get sick. <laughs> I would like to thank the human and dog volunteers for their willing participation. <laughs> thank you for listening. Do we have any questions for Jennifer? I would just like to point out that this was an excellent presentation, and you probably should not have named Uncle Stewart <laughs> as, a, as a subject to your study, <laughs> just for future reference. Okay, we now have a break because of a canceled talk, and I would like to have a discussion period um, during this time. So are there any questions or topics for discussion from the last three papers that anyone would like to bring up? Go ahead, Jeff. Well, I would like to ask a question then. And this question is for Samantha. Are you still here, Samantha? Okay. I am wondering about um, good voice as the target for your study rather than